In 1801, construction began on a fort located between Irudex and Ile du Réron on the Pertuis d'Antiège Straits on the west coast of France. After completion in 1857, the fort was used as a military prison until it was abandoned in 1913. It wouldn't be until 1989 that renovation works began to prepare the fort for hosting a new French game show, Le Clé du Fort Boyard, later shortened to Fort Boyard. In this video, we'll take a look back at the UK version of Fort Boyard, which debuted on British television in 1998, airing during Channel 5's Friday evening slot. The show featured teams of five intrepid adventurers taking on the might of the fort's keeper, Boyard, in an attempt to steal his gold. In order to unlock the treasure, teams would have to go through a series of challenges to win keys and clues that would unlock the treasure room door, granting them access to the precious gold within. Let's take a look back at this iconic game show, including its memorable games, cast, and impact on the world of television entertainment. Despite debuting on French television in 1990, the story of the show's origins dates back a decade to 1980. Philippe de Dulevu, who presented La Chasse au Trésor, which was the original French version of Treasure Hunt, almost drowned attempting to reach Fort Bayard in rough seas, and it was this incident that inspired Jacques Antoine to create the concept of Fort Bayard. Jacques Antoine was a legendary French creator and producer of TV shows. Among his most famous creations were The Crystal Maze, Treasure Hunt, Interceptor, and of course, Fort Boyard. In 1986, the first Fort Boyard concept was outlined when Antoine and his company began searching for a new show to succeed Treasure Hunt. Taking inspiration from role-play games such as Dungeons & Dragons, they came up with the concept of a team of adventurers storming a fort in search of treasure, having to pass a number of obstacles and challenges along the way. The production team visited Fort Boyard in 1987, and after purchasing it for one and a half million francs, they resold the fort to the department of Charente Maritime, who took charge of all the refurbishment works needed to prepare the site for filming. Originally titled Le Clé du Fort Boyard, meaning the keys of Fort Boyard in English, the show debuted on July 7, 1990, on French channel Antenne 2. Fort Boyard has become the most exported French TV format and the fourth most exported adventure style game show format in the world after Wipeout, Fear Factor and Survivor. The first country to purchase the Fort Boyard format was the United Kingdom. Production company Chatsworth Television, who produced multiple shows for Channel 4, including Interceptor and The Crystal Maze, agreed to produce a British version and began working on a concept. A pilot episode was filmed in February 1989 at Elstree Studios in London, as the fort itself was still being refurbished in preparation for the French series. Hosted by Richard O'Brien, six English contestants took part, and a quarter of the actual fort was rebuilt in the studio to make it as close to reality as possible. There were even tigers present in the recording, and according to O'Brien, the pilot cost 2 million francs to produce and film, which was a record at the time. If you are interested in watching this pilot, while it was never officially broadcast, an out-of-sync 20-minute edit of the pilot is available online, uploaded by series co-creator Pierre Loney, and is well worth checking out. Channel 4 wanted to make considerable changes to the show's format that wouldn't be possible on the actual fort, eventually leading to producer Malcolm Hayworth contacting Jacques Antoine to ask him about developing an alternative format in the same vein as Fort Boyard, but with a different backdrop. Just two days later, the concept of the Crystal Maze was born, a show that would go on to become a huge success. To learn more about this, check out my video on the story of the Crystal Maze. 
In 1997, the UK's fifth free channel launched, Channel 5, and one of the first shows it bought the rights to was Fort Boyard. Five series of the British version of Fort Boyard would be produced, four by Channel 5, and then one final series by Challenge. Now let's take a look at the show's format, cast, and some of its most iconic games. Guiding the team through the fort was the main presenter, Melinda Messenger. Her positive and bubbly personality always kept teams motivated to push themselves to their limits. Boyard, the master of the fort, was played by Leslie Grantham, who most famously played Dirty Dan on EastEnders. In my opinion, he was a great choice to play Boyard. He brought the right balance between being mysterious, funny and menacing adding an air of intrigue to the show. Leslie Grantham's commanding presence and enigmatic portrayal of Boyard made contestants both nervous and determined to conquer the challenges within the fort. His deep, resonant voice and imposing demeanor made it clear that the games were no walk in the park, adding an extra layer of excitement and suspense to the Fort Boyard experience. While the format of the show varied from country to country, the British version maintained the same general format throughout its five series run. At the beginning of each episode, we are introduced to the five contestants ready to storm the fort. The contestants would usually arrive at the fort by boat, although in series four a helicopter was used, and in series two and three, contestants had to gain entry to the fort by opening the main gate, their first physical test. The team would then meet Boyard in the fort's courtyard, where he would reveal the daunting challenges awaiting them, his stern expression and cryptic hints, adding an air of anticipation and nervous excitement. Boyard's presence was a crucial element of the show, setting the stage for the adrenaline pumping adventures that lay ahead. To start the show, Boyard would announce, Monsieur Le Bull, the gong. There were two phases of challenges that stood between the contestants and Boyard's treasure. Phase one was known as the challenges and required contestants to complete a series of games in order to retrieve keys. These keys would then be used to open the treasure room door. In the first four series, four keys were required, but this was increased to five keys in the final fifth series on challenge. There were many different games during this phase of the show for contestants to win keys. There were a number of indoor games such as Trapdoor, Cylinders, Tube, Excalibur and Running Water, as well as some outdoor games including Terror Walk. Similarly to the Crystal Maze, if a contestant was not able to get out of the game room when the time ran out, they would be locked in a cell in the middle of the fort until the end of the phase. Although in later series, contestants were given a large set of rusty keys, and if they could figure out which one unlocked the cell, they could escape and rejoin their team. Another way to obtain a key was by answering one of the professor's riddles. The professor, played by Jeffrey Bailden in series one to four, was a mad scientist who'd been kept hostage in the watchtower by Boyard and his task was to ask one of the contestants a riddle. If they were able to answer the riddle before the time ran out, they would keep the key. And if the time ran out, the professor would throw the key into the water and one of the other contestants would have to swim for it. In series five, the professor was replaced with Captain Baker. Guiding the contestants through the fort were Jacques and Jules, portrayed by André Boucher and Alain Prévost. They held the keys to all the rooms in the fort, taking contestants from one room to the next and accompanying them to the watchtower. In 2001, Jules retired and was replaced by Denis, portrayed by Anthony Labor. After successfully collecting the right number of keys from the challenges, the contestants would then put these keys in the locks of the treasure room door. If they didn't have the right number of keys, a contestant could be sacrificed for a key and if they had more than enough keys, extra clues would be given for phase two.
In order to release the treasure later in the show, contestants would have to work out what the password is. To do this, games would be played in phase two, known as the ordeals. These games were much more physically and mentally challenging, really pushing contestants to their limits. The more clues they collected, the easier it would be to guess the treasure room password. The clue words they collected could be placed either side of the mystery treasure room password to make a common word or phrase. For example, in one episode, the password was bridge, and the team received the clues foot, as in footbridge, toll, as in toll bridge, tower, as in tower bridge, and contract, as in contract bridge. Some of the most common ordeals from this phase of the show were tightrope, where the contestant had to walk from one end of the tightrope to the other to retrieve the clue word, snake pit, a terrifying ordeal where the contestant had to find a clue word written on one of hundreds of snakes, no thanks, not for me, human bungee, a bungee jump to grab the clue word, difficult because they only had one shot at it, and the searching head, in which the contestant moved their head through a series of chambers to find words that the rest of the team had to cross off a list, with the last word remaining being the clue word. Personally, I think I would have done quite well in the phase one challenges, but I would have been quite terrified if I had to take part in some of those ordeals. Did you have any favorite games from the show? Let me know in the comments below. When the timer ran out, the treasure room door would open and the contestants had to race down to the treasure room, hoping that they had collected enough clues to know the correct password to release the gold. In order to release the gold, the password would have to be spelled out by standing or placing cannonballs on the letters and calling out each letter one by one to spell the password. Boyard would then instruct the Tiger Master or Monique, who were the Tiger Tamers, to turn a tiger's head statue. Monique, the tiger's head if you please. If the contestants were right, the gold would be released and they would have some time to grab as much gold as possible. If they were wrong, the treasure room door would start to close, prompting their exit from the treasure room empty-handed. Contestants actually won quite often on the show and the gold they collected would be weighed and converted into a cash prize. As well as the five regular series, four celebrity specials were also produced, featuring the likes of Frank Bruno, Gabby Logan, Handy Andy, Samuel Kane, and Nell McAndrew. Despite doing well in terms of ratings, Fort Boyard was eventually cancelled by Channel 5 in March 2002 after four series as part of a station-wide revamp of its programming. Challenge picked up the show for one extra fifth series, but this was a short-lived revival. In 2012, a children's game show version of the show debuted on CITV and Disney XD, titled Fort Boyard Ultimate Challenge, but this didn't quite have the same appeal as the original. And we never know, with the recent revivals of some other classic game shows such as The Crystal Maze and Gladiators, who knows, maybe Fort Boyard could be set for a revival sometime in the near future. Having been exported to many countries around the world, the Fort Boyard concept is one that still lives on to this day, and it's the original French version of the show that has stood the test of time. As of the recording of this film, Fort Boyard in France has just finished its 34th season and shows no signs of slowing down. So if you're missing the old British version of Fort Boyard, why not try watching the French version? I watched a number of episodes during the making of this film and it was incredibly entertaining. Despite only being on our TV screens for about five years, the British version of Fort Boyard is most certainly remembered fondly. It might not have had the same appeal as some other classic game shows, but it had its place on our TV schedules. I, for one, would love to see it return and would even be tempted to try my hand at competing if the opportunity presented itself. How about you? Would you like to take on the challenge of Fort Boyard? 
My thanks to you for watching. If you enjoyed this look back at Fort Boyard, be sure to check out some of the other videos on this channel, remembering some of the great TV shows of days gone by. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment with some of your memories of the show. Thank you, and see you in the next one.